For today's episode, someone asked a question about a strange line in the Lord's Prayer that if you think about it, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Today, I'd like to address it. Hello friends, Pastor Tim Westermeyer here. Thanks for spending some time with me today. We're continuing our series on some questions I've received over the last couple of weeks. And today there's a question about the Lord's Prayer. So let me just read it to you. <clears throat> I'm a bit confused by the lead us not into temptation lines of the Lord's Prayer, which I believe was given to us by Jesus. The Lord's Prayer, of course, is what he means, was given to us by Jesus. My understanding is that God can't be around sin. So isn't this like asking a fish not to seek open air? Or does this line mean help us to resist the temptation that the devil constantly attacks us with? And it strikes me that's a very um, perceptive question. I asked some of my pastor friends um, if they'd ever thought about how curious that line is. And actually, to my surprise, they were all sort of like, nah, never really thought of it. But um, as this questioner points out, it does seem strange to, to pray to God, lead us not into temptation, as if it suggests that God would ever presume to do that. So let me, let me lift up three things. And I am lifting these up from, actually, I found it to be a very helpful short article about precisely this question by a gentleman named Paul Thigpen. Um, and so we will link to this article. I don't know uh, Paul, but Paul, if you're ever listening to this, thank you for your words. Um, and the subtitle of his article is, If God Would Never Lead Us Into Sin, Why Does the Lord's Prayer Include the Phrase, Lead Us Not Into Temptation? Exactly the question that was asked of me. So first point, <clears throat> from a long time ago, Christians have realized <clears throat> that it doesn't make sense for God, that, that God would not lead us into temptation. Here's what uh, Tertullian uh, wrote in 192. Um, Far be the thought, he wrote, that the Lord should seem to tempt as if he were either ignorant of the limits of someone's faith or eager to overthrow that faith. So Tertullian's a really important early theologian, and he's saying, yeah, God would never do that. And biblically, the same thing is lifted up in the book of James, <clears throat> um, where we read, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. So that's the first point. <clears throat> Both early theologians and the Bible witness to the fact that God would not tempt us. Now, second point, confusing that slightly, and which uh, Paul Thigpen addresses here, there is the example of, of God testing people, and maybe most famously, testing Jesus. When we're told the Holy Spirit after Jesus' baptism sends Jesus, actively sends Jesus in the desert to be tempted. So there is this sense in some places that um, there needs to be some kind of trial or a challenge or something like that uh, that will help uh, refine a person's understanding of who they are and of who God is. Um, so there is that witness in the Bible, but I don't think that's what's happening in the Lord's Prayer. Um, but I do want to lift it up because it's a kind of obvious uh, example that no doubt many of you are thinking of. Which brings us to the third point, which is, I think, sort of what is going on um, with the Lord's Prayer. And again, Thigpen is really helpful here. Um, I think it really ultimately has to do with a sense of humility. And what do I mean by that? Well, as he points out, if you uh, flip that petition around, right, so it's lead us not into temptation, or in other translations, put us not to the trial. If you flip it around and say, hey, God, go ahead and test me. I can handle it. It's a reminder that um, that would be the opposite of humility, right? And so the way we say it is basically saying, God, I don't know how much I can handle. So will you please protect me from trials? and temptations. And this is also sort of st structurally baked into the way the Lord's Prayer um, is shaped in that middle section. It's all about what God is doing for us rather than what we can do for ourselves. So, for example, give us this day our daily bread. God, I'm hungry. 
make sure I have enough to eat. Um, forgive us our trespasses. God, I screwed up again. I need your forgiveness. Lead us not into temptation or put us not to the trial. I am weak. I don't know if I can stand up to trials and temptations. Protect me from them. And then deliver us from evil. If I do fall into evil, then you, God, need to draw me out of it. I can't do it for myself. Again, I think it's a really perceptive question. I hope this is a helpful uh, response to it. And as I've said in the last few episodes, if you have a question you'd like us to take up in a future episode, would you please reach out to me? I would love to hear from you, and I'd love to try to address it uh, at some point in the future. In the meantime, be well, stay in touch, and God bless. Mm -hmm.